from London. A problem that I hear a lot of my viewers have is that there's so much they want to see and do while they're here, but they're struggling to fit everything into their itinerary. So in this video, I'm going to give you my top tips for how you can maximize your visit to London, even with your limited time here, and how to do it without completely burning out and falling over exhausted in the middle of the street. So let's go. London is a very popular city to visit. I mean, look at it. This whole channel shows you why. But that also means that during peak times, which is basically during the school holidays in the summer, so from July to early September, and also during the Christmas period, it gets very, very busy in this city. If you're planning on doing the very touristy things, you should expect to do a little bit less than you had planned because they will be so slow moving. And you might also miss out on a couple of things if they are sold out. So if you can avoid traveling during peak time, then you can avoid the craziness of those peak time crowds. However, I know a lot of people cannot avoid traveling at those times. So there's actually a really easy solution to avoid it anyway. It's to explore outside of the main touristy areas and attractions. If you go explore areas like Hampstead, Brixton, or London Fields, those are not affected by mass tourism, so you will not have to worry about slow moving, everything, and also lots of crowds. Use the underground. Listen, I know if you're coming here and you've never taken public transport before, it can be a little bit overwhelming and scary, but actually taking the tube is the most efficient way to get around the city. I know sometimes you guys will say that you want to hire a car. First of all, never, ever, ever, ever hire a car for London. You will regret it the instant you pull it out of the rental car place. And you can use taxis to get around. However, don't forget, there's gonna be a lot of traffic a lot of times of the day. So if you just hop on the tube, you're gonna be a lot more efficient and that will help you to get more stuff into your itinerary each day. You can familiarize yourself with how you take the tube in London by watching our How to Take the Tube in London 101 video after you finish this video. And the apps that will tell you the best way to get around London via tube or bus or any public transport are Google Maps and City Mapper. Those are always the two that we tell you guys to download. They both work great. On that note, stay somewhere that is super well connected but not necessarily within all of the tourist attractions. There's actually quite a big difference between choosing an area that is quite well connected by a public transport and staying somewhere that's by all the major tourist attractions like Westminster. You don't have to say super central in order to be able to get places really easily because our tube system is really good. So as long as you choose a hotel that's within a five minute walk of some of the best stations that we have around the city, you can get almost anywhere that you need to fairly easily. Some of the most connected stations that are not in very central London are Kings Cross, Paddington, where we are now, Old Street, Liverpool Street, and Earl's Court. They all have multiple tube lines that go through them, which means it's not that hard to get to a lot of different parts of the city from them, even though you're not staying smack dab in the middle of the city. By the way, there's no one good area for you to stay in London. There are lots of really good ones that have their pros and cons. And if you wanna know some of the areas that we do love for tourists to stay in, then you can watch our YouTube video about areas to stay in in London after you watch this video, link in description. Figure out the things you wanna do in advance and also the things you don't wanna do. And crucially, only do the things that you want to do. This might sound obvious, but the thing about people is that we all have different tastes. So just because someone tells you that you must do the Tower of London when you are here, if that sounds like you're just gonna be staring at old walls for two hours, then don't do it and plan to skip it. There's so much to do here in London and you only have a limited amount of time to do it. Only do the things that you wanna do and then push everything else to the side so that you have time for the good stuff. You do you.
plan your days in walkable areas. I think a lot of tourists really don't understand how widespread London is. And unless you're okay with walking many, many, many miles in a day, then you definitely want to make sure you are planning each of your days in a small area with the things that you can actually walk to. Otherwise, you're either going to walk a ton or you're going to end up spending a lot of time traipsing across London, taking public transport to get everywhere. So pick an area and try to stick to one area each day. And here's the thing. I don't want you to over plan your day. That is a surefire way to make sure that you are exhausted and might even end up missing some stuff that you wanted to see because you crammed way too much into your itinerary for each day. Instead, I recommend having two or three main things that you definitely want to do and then having your meals planned around it and give yourself some time to just explore on a whim around that and to relax and sit at a cafe and put your feet up for a bit if you feel like you need to. By the way, if you've been watching all of our videos and reading all of our content and taking all these recommendations in and then thinking, I have no idea how to piece this all into a cohesive itinerary that won't make me run around the city all day, every day. Well, good news. We've already done that for you. You can grab one of our London itineraries and we tell you exactly the route that you should follow each day that will maximize your time and make sure you get loads of stuff done and also make sure you don't tire yourself out. We tell you all of the major attractions you should go to and how to do it in a way that makes sense, but also tell you about the hidden gems that you can't miss along the way. And it all comes with a handy digital map. So if you want to grab our London itinerary, click the link in the description box of the video. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, I know people are going to be split on this one, but don't take a day trip from London. Now hear me out. My rule of thumb is usually that if you are in London for less than seven days, don't take a day trip. That's because we have so much that you can do here. I mean, we literally have a six day London itinerary, so we can definitely keep you busy in this city. Plus, if you go do a day trip, then you're spending three to five hours on the train. You're gonna have a limited amount of time in the place that you're going to, and you'll have lost an entire day in the city, which if you're coming to London, you gotta experience London, right? England is great, but try to leave that for another visit if you're not here for very long and stick in the city. But maybe I'm a little bit biased, who knows? Next up, make your bookings and buy your tickets in advance. Listen, I love a bit of spontaneity when traveling. I think it's great. But the truth is, is if you've got a big travel group or you're visiting in peak season, that anytime you're trying to get into one of the popular London restaurants, you will need to book in advance to avoid disappointment. And if it's peak season, attractions and theater tickets can also get booked up. So it's always best when you can to make your reservations in advance for restaurants and book your attraction tickets and your theater tickets. That way you don't end up wasting time if you're trying to eat, just roaming around central London, trying to find any old restaurant that actually has a table that will be able to seat you guys. And you won't get to attractions that you really wanted to see and find out that actually there's no space available and you gotta find something else to do in that time. So planning in advance and booking in advance is great. Plus sometimes you get a little bit of a discount when you do that. We love a discount. It's great. Finally, probably my favorite way to make the most of your time in London is to utilize tours. There are tons of really knowledgeable, amazing tour guides here in London that will take you around the major sites, around certain areas, and teach you about the history of the city. So why not utilize their knowledge and do so in an efficient way? Tours are really great because they pack a lot of information and a lot of experience into a small amount of time. For example, if you wanna try lots of different British food while you're here, it would take you tons of time to run around the city trying something here, trying something here, trying something here. Instead, you can book a food tour and you'll try loads of different things in small portions in a short amount of time while also hearing about the history of each dish. 
We have lots of amazing tours around London that we recommend. We'll put some links to some of our articles in the description box of the video. We also work closely with some great partners who are small businesses that do really great stuff like Tally Ho, who does fun vintage bike tours around the city, and Rebel Tours, which is a female-run tour business who do an ethical version of Jack the Ripper tours, which actually you stop at this beautiful house here during that tour, highly recommend it. It's a really interesting experience. So be sure to check out in the description box, tons of great tours that we recommend that we think you should book. Don't forget to grab one of our London itineraries if you want your trip basically already planned for you by us Londoners. And for more tips for your trip to London, watch one of our hundreds of other videos by clicking a box popping up right around me.